Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. You are born of Muslim family. Or you may be born of Christian family. Wait, let me finish. Then you can talk. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. What do you do in the ears of the child? What do you whisper? The moment you do that, okay, you introduce Islam to the child. Because me, not born of a Muslim family, the moment I accept and say there is only one God and Prophet Muhammad is his messenger, if I say that sincerely, and if I say that in Arabic, am I not a Muslim? Thank you. John chapter 5, verse 30. Jesus says, I can of my own self do nothing. And also in Mark 13, verse 32, we hear also, but of that day and that hour, knows no man, no, not the angels which are in the heaven, neither the son, but the father. And also you yourself, you have said that the word is son, it is not uh, just recently, not physically. Now my, my questions are two. One question is about, now he is a son of God, or he is God. Why he don't know anything, and also why he, he can't do anything except with the will of God? That's your number one. Number two, if he is not son, I mean, if he is son, literally, but, I mean, if he is son, literally, but not physical, now, who is he in the eyes of God? There are two subjects, okay? Firstly, I explain from a Christian perspective the misunderstanding that we, most people have about the term son of God. The subject now posed is a different subject matter altogether. Is Jesus God? Okay, in other words, if Jesus is God, how come he does not know the how, etc.? That's where the question comes from. Now, as a Christian apologist, I am quite aware when questions are coming from the floor, I have to read behind the question. I have to read behind the question why the question is asking the question. And I'm telling you now why the question is asking the question. You agree with that. Because I never touched whether Jesus is God. I only, I, I only gave the misconceptions that people have on the term Son of God. Now, the subject of the deity of Jesus Christ is a different subject altogether. Just like is the Bible the word of God. Somehow it was touched upon. It's a subject matter altogether. And I can quote to you verses from the Quran which, which says that the Bible is the word of God. Even says to Prophet Muhammad, if you are in doubt, go to the people of the book Al-Kitabi, those who have the scriptures before you, and go see. If the Bible was not the word of God, what they were holding in their hand, Right. The question Christians ask is, well, if, do you see now, because it does not agree with certain things in the Quran, it's corrupted. When was it corrupted? Before Muhammad's time? During Muhammad's time? After Muhammad's time? Tell us who corrupted it. Now, with any, 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 any documentation that comes through hundreds of years, but, okay, a lot of documents have come to us. Perfect. When I say perfect. But it doesn't mean that they are inspired on the word of God. So transmission of accuracy does not confirm the truthfulness of a document. Thirdly, even the Quran itself, if you read the history of the Quran and its transmission, there are very many variants. But it does not change the teaching of Islam and the Quran. Just like the Bible, there's many variations. Even skeptics, scholars, agnostics will tell you. Even people like Bart Ehrman, which who now became an atheist, will tell you the variant readings do not affect any cardinal teaching of the Christian faith. 
just like the variant reading in the Quran, that's a subject altogether, which is a long subject altogether. People are still dwelling into it. Muslims are still dwelling into it. Right, they're finding newer manuscripts and they're looking at it from different angles. But the variant readings does not mean that it is corrupted because the teachings per se, the principal teachings are not. Think for instance, for argument's sake, why was the Quran burnt by the Caliph? Why was it burnt? Why was it destroyed? What was wrong? Why was one standard compiled? It's a different subject altogether. We can talk, I'm not criticizing, but there are merits on what was done, and there are also a disadvantage of what, what was done. So what I'm saying to you is that, as I said to you, that Jesus said exactly what he said, okay? Because he was getting miracles, he did not perform on his own. He, he said, nothing I do without my father's permission. Always sought the permission of the father. So if there's something that was not told to him, who are you and I to discuss that? We cannot. So, but I know what the question is now, with many minds, because this will be posed to us all the time. If Jesus is God, how come he does not know the how? If Jesus is God, how come he does not do that? Now that is a stupid subject I deliberately, conveniently shall we decide. Because I don't want to get into conflict and confrontation with my Muslim friends. I want to take common grounds. I want to take common grounds like the virgin birth and tell you why I believe the virgin birth just like you believe. But then what is the, what is the reason for the virgin birth? From my perspective, I'll tell you that. Full stop. Whether you believe it or not, my perspective left to you. I, my job is not to find fault in your Quran. That was my job. It's, it's difficult for us. Like for instance, I was doing a talk one day. This is the fish. Okay. I took two apples. Okay. Beautiful red apple. Okay. And I put them there. And one on the other side was rotten. You can't see it. So I placed it like a boat. You can see both are very nice apples. So I said to the audience, there's two apples here. Which one is a good apple and which was a bad apple? See, they all look the same. So I turned it this way and showed them that, said, no, that's rotten. So I said, why are you judging? Why are you judging that apple? No, I can see it's rotten. So similarly, you and I have differences. Because you believe certain things, and because it's not in the Bible, or, in, or the Bible countries that, you don't believe it. That is your prerogative. That's your prerogative. It's my job to tell you why I believe what I believe. Not to condemn you, not to criticize you. That's why I have such a lovely, warm relationship here at the IPCI. Okay, so the subject matter, like I said to Muhammad, let us stick to the subject matter. I told you when I come here, I'm going to talk to the misconceptions that not only Muslims have, many people have the Christian faith, and one of the one of the thing is the Son of God story, okay. And the other thing why why I put uh, Shabir Ali is there's few others that can go with Shabir Ali, okay. And I can show you the sponsors from email responses which agrees with me, okay. Even the, the crucifixion, the latest the latest last year, Shabir said to me, Pastor, I have to do go back to the drawing board. I have to do more research on the subject. But I pose questions to him. <clears throat> But I'm not criticizing. I'm asking questions. So, as I said to you, he, he, he performed miracles how? With the permission of God. If God didn't allow him, would he perform? No. So, let's read it in this context. Anybody else? Who is Jesus before the Messiah? Jesus was the Messiah, Al Masih, special Messiah. Just like, as you said just now, there are many people in the Bible called the sons of God. Okay, agreed, but nobody's called the son of God who had a special relationship with God. If you notice something, why was Christ, according to the Bible, okay, you will not agree with it, according to the Bible, why was he crucified? Why was he sent? At the high priest Caiaphas, Caiaphas asked him a question. Tell us, are you the son of God? And Jesus Christ was silent, did not speak. Then the high priest under oath, under oath, said to him, now I adjure you, are you? Then Jesus made a statement. You will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of glory. Okay? 
As soon as he said that, the high priest understood from the Old Testament scriptures that he was associated with God and he was making himself equal with the relationship with God. He said, blasphemy! He tore his coat, okay, clothes. And then upon that, he was condemned. Just to, to put in that shell. So that's a different question, uh, subject altogether. So let me explain to you. But I want to put up this morning to come here. This morning, <laughs> Mohammed Khan phones me. Okay, they were supposed to contact me because Christmas was very busy. I'm always available for him. So this morning at 10 o'clock, I just put something together. I said, we go there just to present the Christian perspective. Right, not condemning the Islamic viewpoint. But I don't want to do that. If you say the Bible is not the word of God, you have the right to say that. But prove it to me. But I'm saying to you, but the Quran says it's the word of God. If you say it's corrupted, when was it corrupted? Before Muhammad, Khandi, got a time of Muhammad, it was accepted. And Allah tells him, go to the Christian. They have the book with them. If they didn't have the book with them, why go there? So there's a lot of interpretation. So what do we do next time? When our visitor comes back again, I like him. This a short time I had with him. I like his approach. Okay. So when he comes next time, maybe we'll, we'll know in advance that we need to make some, uh, uh, arrangement. We will have a dialogue. He present Islamic viewpoint. I present the Christian viewpoint. I don't criticize him. He does not criticize me. He was understanding is not clear. I will try to give him a better understanding of the Christian faith. And the man is saying not clear about the Quran. He will give me because he's a learned man. Until that I had a chat with him. You know what I mean? <coughs> he's very, uh, very what you call uh, approachable somebody. Okay? And, uh, and when he spoke here also, uh, I appreciated the manner and the tone that he took the podium. I also compliment him and commend him for that, as he commended me. Thank you. Pastor, I have one question and a half here. The half question is that in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. T-H-E. They are the sons of God. And the full question is that if Christianity it was the religion of God, why God didn't mention follow Christianity? This is my religion, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran in many places. In the and Allah in Islam. Indeed, the deen in the lie by Allah, Al Islam is the Islam. So I want you to please answer this question. Just recently at the debate between Yusuf Ali and James White. Some Muslims asked me the same question in a formal, informal talk. And I said to them, okay, for the same reason that you reject the Kwadini prophet, Amid, okay, because he claims to be the prophet of God, you reject him. Because according to you, the Quran says that Muhammad himself says that he is the final and last prophet sent to mankind. Am I correct? Am I correct? Sorry? That's what I'm just saying the Quran says so. And therefore, you reject Kwadini teachings and Ghulam, what is his name again? Yeah, uh, uh, that Kadiani part I always get wrong. <laughs> yeah, you don't accept him as a prophet of God, do you? Wait, wait. Only ask the question, do you accept him as a prophet of God? No. Now, similarly, we Christians, and I in particular, do not accept Muhammad as a prophet of God because Jesus, to me, in the teachings of the Old Testament scriptures and the New Testament, is the final revelation of God. We can discuss that. We can dialogue on that. I'm not rejecting. I'm not rejecting Muhammad, okay, like many do, okay? And just like how you rejecting the founder and so-called prophet of the Kwaidini, called him the cult, and to me, personally, to be straightforward, to me, Islam is like a cult, offshoot of Christianity, right? There's many truths in Islam, and there's many misunderstanding in Islam, Okay, but now many Christians still don't understand that. When Muhammad was speaking about that, yes, there were a group of Christians at that time, okay, 
that believe that because Roman Catholics lifted up Mary in a very high pedestal. Okay, what I'm saying is, but well, I can't take that and say now that the Quran is wrong in the interpretation of the Trinity. But he was addressing a specific people at a specific time, and those people believe such things. You know what I'm trying to say? So similarly now, I'm begging of you, students and others, understand where the Christian is coming from, talk to him. You know, what hurts me most, and Mahmoud will tell you that, by the time I come and meet a group of Muslims, they all gather around me, they want to boom bang me, <laughs> they'll tell you that, and uh, sometimes I have to lash back at them, you know, and stop them because, because, you know, sometimes little learning is a dangerous thing, okay? So, all I'm saying is now, I'm, I'm pleading, I am pleading to my Christian friends also, please understand the Muslim mind. Understand where they're coming from. I'm pleading to you, understand the Christian mind. Understand where they're coming from. Just as our learned friend said to us now, the commentaries, etc. there, some of them are there to help us, but they're not, they cannot replace the Quran. Just like that, there are other people that have commentaries, etc. the Christians who did that, and they made mistakes in interpretation. So you can't take that and say, now, this is what the Christians believe. Unless you can substantiate by the Bible and say, this is what Christians believe. This is what the Bible says. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, in closing, in closing, I would like to, I would like to come back again, okay, especially when you come down, okay, but I like your approach, okay. And normally, Muhammad will tell you, I don't like this debate sort of a thing, okay, because when we talk like this, uh, 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 because we all get emotional at times. One well, last question, last one. Relating to your, your, you just spoke about now, who is the spirit of truth that in, ch in, in, in chapter of John, that Jesus Christ is speaking about, the spirit of truth to come, he will abide with you forever, and he will speak of what you sp what he spoke, and you say, you refute the, the fact that Prophet Muhammad came down with the Quran and stuff, so could you elaborate on that? Though my question was not that, but just the facts that you spoke of something that's not true, so could you explain that? The question there is, did the Bible prophesy the coming of Muhammad, both in the Old Testament, okay, and the New Testament, okay? There are quotations taken from the Old Testament, the Book of Solomon, okay? There are quotations taken from the Book of Isaiah, okay, to prove that the, Bi the, Quran, the Bible foretold the coming of Muhammad. I'm aware of that. Did I have written books about that? Week and night, I've written about that, he preached about that, I've got things about that. That's a different subject altogether. Cannot be answered with a yes or a no. The certain questions can never be answered with a yes or a no. See if I ask the question now, just, just in passing, okay? If you ask me as a Christian, okay, is Jesus God? How do I answer? I can't answer the question with a yes or a no. As a Christian, I cannot answer the question with a yes or a no. Some questions can never be answered with a yes or a no. So I respect that person's last last question, but that is now, did did the Bible foretell the coming of Muhammad? That's a different subject altogether. And if you're interested, okay, they have been uh, articles that I put how to answer certain people, etc. But it's a different subject altogether. But as I said, as students who are who are learning, getting knowledge, all I'm asking is. Please understand the other side as much as I'm understanding your side. They are my friends over here. I come here. I don't fight with them. We talk. I explain them what I believe. They explain me what they believe, why they believe what they believe, and I explain them why I believe what I believe. I have made some changes in my life about the Islamic faith. I made some dramatic changes in my life. I made some adverse comments in writing. I had to withdraw them. I did public speaking about Islam in the 1970s because of Didat, because of radical way he was approaching things. And I got back, hit him again in the same style. It was wrong. Two rights don't, two wrongs don't make a right. But since then, acquiring knowledge, I learned that that was the wrong approach. We need to learn to understand one another. We all are not an island. No man is an island. We're all part of this one continent. We all need each other. We all need to uplift each other. We all need 
to learn from each other. Okay, thank you very much. We are the Muslim Ummah. Alhamdulillah, one in five people in the world is a Muslim. But have we considered that four out of five people may die without Islam? Four out of five may never get the chance to read the glorious Holy Quran. Become a lifetime partner with the Islamic Propagation Center International Dawa Quran Project and help bring real solutions to the four out of five people searching for answers. By sponsoring a Holy Quran, you give the gift of life, real life, IPCR, Dawa Quran Project. It's time to get involved. Call IPCI now, IPCI, encircling the globe with the message of Islam.